Okay, it's November 10th, it's a Tuesday, and we're doing definite integrals. We did average value already, and I'm going to talk about that today. What I want to do is talk about the new program, MTSC. How do you do a mid-sum? How do you do a Simpsons sum? Now, we haven't done that yet, right? So let's do one. Okay, so let's say I want to find this area. Are you ready, Freddy? Come on, load, load, load. Okay. So say I want this area. The area from x equals 0 to 4 under the curve y equals e to the negative x squared dx. Question is, what is that? Right? Now, there's a number of ways you could do this. You could use the program we had last week, LRTE. You can use the new program I gave you to punch in tonight, MTSC, and we're going to. Or you can do it by hand. You can do what the MTSC program does by hand. I'm going to show you what it does by hand so you understand what it's doing. Okay? Now, this is a perfect example of when you want to use a program because there is no closed form algebraic antiderivative for this. This isn't an antiderivative you can get from, say, u sub. There's just no function whose derivative I know is that. Okay? There is an answer. There's an area. This is a continuous function. Okay? There's an area under that curve. So there is a definite integral. The number exists. But the antiderivative that it's based on, I don't have an algebraic version of it. So we've got to do this by hand or by calculator. Let's do it by hand, OK? Did you ever do a mid sum? Let's do one. OK, let's make a mid sum out of this. So I'm going to graph this thing. All right, so here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, and here's your origin. And if you plug in 0 for x, you get e to the 0, which is 1. And if you graph this on hell, you're going to get a bell curve. You ever hear of bell curve? Like in statistics? The Z chart comes from the bell curve that's normalized, so the area is 1 under the curve. No? Never heard of that? Never done that stuff? Okay. Well, that's okay. We're not doing statistics. Now, let's say I want the area from 0 to 4. Okay, so here's 1, here's 2, here's 3, here's 4, let's say. I'm not sure exactly where the concavity changes. This may not be accurate, okay? Let's say I want to do a mid-sum with two rectangles. Now, forget mid-sum for a minute. What's delta x if I want two rectangles from 0 to 4? 2, right? Remember, b minus a over n, 4 minus 0 over 2. OK. So let's draw these rectangles. See what this rectangle looks like. Now, it's not a left sum. It's not this guy, a left sum. OK? Delta x is 2. That would be a left sum, right? That's not it. It's not a right sum with a delta x equal to, that's not it. What's a mid sum? It, the height is gotten from the middle. It's this high. OK, so something like this, I guess, around there. OK, so the delta x part is the same. But we're not taking the height from the left side, not f of 0. We're not taking the height from the right side, f of 2. We're taking the height from the middle, the height from the middle, f of 1, in this case. OK? All right, and the same thing here. f of 3 is the height. So let's draw another rectangle where the y value at 3 is the height. Let's say I did it OK, all right? Now, remember last time when we did trap. Trap was an overestimate when your function was concave up. Mid is going to be an underestimate when your concave up. But look, this thing isn't always concave up. It's concave down, then it's concave up. So I really don't know what the error term is going to do, OK? Unless the whole thing's concave up, or the whole thing's concave down on the whole domain, 0 to 4, I really can't predict what the error is going to do. I don't know if this is an overestimate or an underestimate. And I didn't draw it too good, so even looking at this, like, oh, look, it looks like there's more overestimating than underestimating here, so this part's overestimating. But there's more underestimating here than here, so this is underestimating. So overall, what is it doing? I don't know, because this isn't really drawn perfectly to scale anyway. So how do you do it? You're going to find the area of each rectangle. Let's do it. It's going to be, whoops. It's going to be delta x for the, for the base of each rectangle times the first height is what? f of 1, right? And the second height is f of 3, actually, right? The height here, f of 3. This is 2, so f of 3. And remember what we did before? There's a delta x times the height and a delta x times the height. Why don't we just factor out the delta x? So in this example, that's your mid sum. Now you tell me, you know what delta x is. What is it? It's 2. And f of 1, what is f of 1? 
e to the negative 1 squared. That's e to the negative 1. Okay. And what's f of 3? e to the opposite of 3 squared. 3 squared? 9. Okay? That's your mid sum. You want a decimal approximation? All right, let's ask Hal. All right, Hal, where are you? And we'll just, we're going to find out what that is. Okay, so on. And is it here? No. So I'll clear that. I'll clear that. Okay, so I want two times e to the negative 1. Now, e is uh, diamond x, isn't it? And it's negative 1, close to the e to the, plus diamond x is e to the, the green thing here, uh, negative 9. And I'm going to approximate, so it's going to give me a decimal approximation. That's what I want. And whoops, I, I lost the negative. Sorry. That was bad. Oh, that was so bad. Yeah, but everybody on YouTube is going to. All right, point seven three six ish okay? So I'm in fixed 4, so I can do convergence tables, but I usually write it to three places. So 736-ish. So let's do that. 0 0.736 is my estimate. Now, I know that's an overestimate or underestimate. We'll find out later. But Simpson's rule is based on mid sum and trap sum. Could we do a trap sum here? Let's do a trap sum and see what we get now. Same question, but do a trap sum. Because remember what I said last time. Simpson's rule is like a trap sum, but instead of having a straight line up here, it has some kind of a parabola. So it tries to match the curve a little bit. Instead of having a straight line here, it has a parabola. To actually figure out the area under this curve geometrically is a, way, a real bear of a problem. Without calculus, right? We're not doing calculus to, to avoid calculus. That's ridiculous. There's a geometric way of doing that. As it turns out, remember when we did trap, wasn't it just the average of left and right? Okay, the same thing happens with Simpsons. Simpsons is just the weighted average of two mids in a trap. What does weighted average mean? No, weighted average means that one of the terms or more counts more than once. All right, if I have two mids in a trap, how do you average two mids in a trap? Add them up and divide by? Three. Right? So it looks like I have two things, mid and trap, but I'm dividing by three because I'm counting mid twice. Okay? So if I know trap, I can take this mid and that trap and figure out Simpsons without doing anything complicated. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll run the program to do the rest of the work for us. All right, so let's do the same question. Let's draw this thing again. But now we'll draw the trapezoid, so it's easy to do trapezoid error, area. So from 0 to 4, let's say that's where 4 is. And we're going to draw the trapezoid. So I need like a, a height, a base here and a base here for the trapezoids, and a base here and a base here. And then I need this little line segment. So notice that if it's concave down, for the most part it's concave down here. Trap is an underestimate, right? And when it's concave up, trap is an overestimate. Okay? So how do you get the area of those trapezoids? Not the, under the curve, under the line. Well, you know how to get the area of a trapezoid. It's the height times the average of the bases. Height plus B1 times B1 plus B2 over 2. But B1 is F of? B1, the first base, F of 0. Base 2 is f of 2. So let's write that. Okay. So we're going to approximate this problem again. We're going to approximate it with the height of the trapezoid plus the average times the average of the bases, f of 0 plus f of 1. No, f of 2. Right? Now the average means I'm dividing by 2, right? But remember we factored that out? Because we've got to do it for the first trap and the second trap. What's the first base of the second trap? F of who? F of who? Is that Dr. Seuss? Huh? F of 2. And what's the other base? F of 4. Okay. Whoops. That's a big parenthesis. Okay. 
So let's work that out. Delta x is still 2 over 2 is 1. So 1 times f of 0 is e to the 0, right? Hmm? Yes, I, I'm trying to get there. Plus 2 f of 2, so that's 2 times e to the negative 4, because this is f, I'm plugging in 2, plus e to the negative 16. So that's my estimate for trap. So we take the previous estimate, double it, and this estimate, add it, divide by 3, you're going to get Simpson's rule. But I have to stop for YouTube. So see you, YouTube. Have a nice day.